Today's Skull and Bones video is an honest and real review for the game. And I know you've been seeing a lot of people jump on the bandwagon where they hate this game, and this game's bad, and oh, blah, 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 blah. But this is an honest and real review from someone who has played this game hundreds of hours, played it in the betas. But also, I'm going to be real with you, while Ubisoft gave me this game for free, and I won a contest that gave me 20 game keys, I'm still going to give you the honest, real, realest review you're ever going to see. Let's get into it. Before we get into the review, it's good that you would know what my history of gaming is. I've been gaming for countless years since I was three years old. But I am mostly an MMORPG gamer. That is my favorite genre, my favorite niche. So that's World of Warcraft, Arc Age, Albion Online, etc. And many other MMOs. So, of course, I was drawn to this game. Also, I am in a former ex-pro gamer for Halo 2, Counter-Strike, and several fighting games, as well as other games, but I wasn't super successful in those. They're not really worth mentioning. I play almost all manner of games, you know, League, Minecraft, etc. So I'm basically an all-around gamer. So I am not like, oh, this genre good, this genre bad. I play almost every and all video games out there. Now, let's sum up the review real quick. So the beginning of the game is very fun. I think it was very exciting and very neat. It was a neat, fun little game. The middle ground, or the middle part of the game, it's about, it's kind of samey, you know, you do the same little missions, little escort missions, you got, uh, you know, FedEx missions, kill the enemy missions, you know, it's, it's samey, but it's tolerable, it's something to do. And then at the end game, oh man, it becomes a mega boring snooze fest. This game is like an idle game. It is something that I would play while watching anime or doing something else, like watching a stream or a YouTube video. Not something that would keep my attention or focus or even interest. We're going to talk about it. So the beginning of the game, not counting the story because I skipped all cutscenes and all dialogues. I am not entrenched by a pirate story. I don't care about the characters. I don't care about what their motivations are or anything of the sort. This is a review purely based on gameplay and the fact that I can play online with other people. I have not cared for a video game story for the past, like, 10, 15 years, or, or hell, even longer than that, like 20, 20 years. I have not cared for a video game story, not one bit. So the beginning of the game is very exciting. It's very action-packed. You're learning the game. You're, you're getting your boots wet. You're learning basic things. The game has a nice, slow pace. And one of the problems that I feel that this game has is that you progress way too fast. I think that the game progresses you. You level up too fast. You upgrade too fast. Uh, ships become very quickly irrelevant. Your weapons become irrelevant. Uh, the, the majority of the game becomes irrelevant as you progress. There's no reason to use certain weapons, certain builds, certain ships. Uh, there's no reason to even do certain activities. Like, I have zero reason to go out right now and kill ships. I have zero reason to plunder bases. I There's no motivation and no reason to do it. I don't get really anything useful or... or like, like, it's all pretty much pointless to do, right? I can go out here and I can farm this level 2 ship if I want to, sure. And boom, there we go. You know, that's just two cannons, and uh, we shoot him with the four cannons, and he's basically dead. And then we get some loot. We actually get, uh, you know, we got an uncut garnet and some fine jute and some silver repair kit. You know, you're like, oh wow, yeah, you're farming ships. whoop de doo right? In MMORPGs, you would generally farm ships. And, you know, get rewards. There we go. We're one-shotting a level one ship. That feels pretty good. You can't one-shot a level one ship at the start of the game, but you can kill it relatively quickly enough where it does, it's not that big of a power spike, honestly. Like, the beginning of the game, though, you're, you're learning things. You're out here gathering and chopping trees and fishing and hunting alligators, and you think all this stuff's going to matter later. Like, none of, the, none of the resources you gather at the start of the game matter at the end of the game. None of it. It has no use, no purpose, and no point. So, the only real logical way to play the game, if you know what you're doing, besides exploring and feeling out the world, is to just race to the end game. Because there's no, there's no point in staying at the beginning of the game, there's no point in learning the factions, there's no point in absorbing the story, there's, there's no point in any of it. There's no point in going out and gathering and building your crafting tools, because you're going to be able to just do that way quicker later on. And once you get to the end of the game, you have these level 10 ships that are kind of a pain in the butt. And you can still kill them relatively quickly. You know, I'm using the best purple cannons in the game. So, yeah, these ships die pretty fast. And, you know, it takes three shots instead of one to two shots. Like, that's the differential here, right? And, uh... 
Uh, now, a lot of builds can't kill this quickly. If you're using an inefficient build, inefficient weapons, inefficient ships, then you can't kill this. I'm using a tank ship right now. I'm in the tank ship, so I'm not even using a DPS ship. I could kill these quicker in a DPS ship, but uh, it, it's whatever, right? And so, th that's the game. You Like, th this isn't the end game. I'll show you the end game in a bit. But the beginning of the game, you actually have a purpose. You go out and you do quests. Go go dress up as the enemy and then raid their base. It'll be funny, Lamau. You know, go get me ten ivories and then turn them in. Go and kill five ships for me. And make sure you board two of them to, just to show them our might. And, you know, it's exciting, it's fun, it's cool. So then you get to the mid-game. You're used to the game's mechanics. You've upgraded your ship. You've upgraded your cannons. You know how things work. And uh, you sail around and you continue doing the same quests. Except instead of gathering low-level trees and low-level iron, you're gathering mid-level trees and mid-level iron. So you feel like there's a progression there. And some of the recipes you're building for your cannons and your ship still require the low-level stuff. You still have fun doing the little gathering mini-game here where you get a bunch of resources and you like to see your numbers go up. You aren't quite super rich yet and mega powerful. You don't have the best guns. But you're working towards it so you have a goal in mind. You're still watching your ship level and your gear score rise. You're still able to have somewhat fair and lengthy fights with other enemy ships rather than just blowing them up instantly, which is fine. Some of the boss fights do take a bit of, you know, you might die a few times during them. You might die a few times plundering if you're not careful. You're still learning how to brace. You're still learning how to block. And, and the game is okay. The game is still holding your interest enough to play 20 hours per day. That's right. I was playing this game 20 hours a day. I was hooked. I was like, yeah, this is cool. Boom, blow them up, kill them. Your pirates are singing she shanties. They're doing shout calling. They're calling out locations. You feel really involved with the world. You know, you might be customizing your ship at this point with, you know, sails and, you know, buying some random upgrades. You're still randomly going up to the spots and gathering whatever this stuff is, like Acacia. Yeah, we're chopping the trees. Look at the numbers go up. You're still having fun. You're still enjoying the world and what it has to offer. That's the mid game. And then you get to the end game. And the only way to upgrade or progress further is to do very monotonous, boring grinds, which I'm going to show you right now. You go to the helm and you have to... Build up these bases. They're all full. Like, I haven't bothered to collect. Oh, look. These need to be funded. Okay, there you go. I'll see you in eight hours when you're ready to collect. You go to the base. And, hey, look. It's a player. Except, uh, here's the problem. I can't talk to him because chat has been disabled for the past two or three weeks now. Uh, let's get out of this view. Yeah. Chat service is currently unavailable. It's been unavailable for weeks. I don't play games to play by myself. I don't play games to not socialize and interact with others. I don't have friends. How am I supposed to make friends in this game and interact with people if I can't talk to them? Okay, here's how you interact with people. You shoot a firework. Hey, you shoot your back cannons, which are heal cannons. Look, I'm... Okay, this ship doesn't have heal cannons. But I can't hurt him anyway. He's not PvP flagged. By the way, I just collected some coins from this base, and it's going to take hours until it's ready to collect again. So now we're going to sail down to this base and collect some coins. And while I collect coins, I'll be randomly attacked by these level 10 ships. And uh, if I don't, if I'm not a meta gamer, I'm not playing the best builds, the best ships, this will hurt, even on a tank ship. Okay, well, they missed anyway, but if they landed it, it would still hurt a good amount, right? People are complaining that they're getting two shotted by the enemy ships. And this one, this one's aim really sucks. Like, uh, here we go. Is this going to hit? Boom. Okay, I'm a tank ship, so I didn't take as much damage there. But there are ships that basically one-shot you. They can one or two-shot you. And, uh, you know, even with the upgraded best ships and best armor, you're still getting two-shotted. It feels bad. It feels stupid. And you have to do this dumb coin-collecting crap constantly to get the final upgrades, which I've already gotten. Uh, it, it was taking me about 20 hours per upgrade. I put about one week into the game until I was able to boost my coin output enough to get all the guns. I have all the purple bombards, all the purple long nines, the, the torpedoes, which suck, the, uh, just every, every gun, every armor, and every ship unlocked. It took me about one week of playing the end game, anywhere from 12 to 20 hours a day, which you may be thinking, oh, that's plenty of time, that's plenty of time. Ah, man, it's, like, the, the grind shouldn't be over in the first week. Even for a metal hardcore gamer like myself. But the problem is, is that this isn't fun. This is not exciting gameplay. This is boring as hell. This sucks. This makes me not want to play the game. When I'm doing this stuff, 
I am actively watching streams, YouTube videos. I'm I'm watching like anime. I am not participating in the game. I mean, I am. I'm technically floating my ship around and collecting these coins and killing the enemy ships that attack me for collecting the coins. But that's it. That's your end game. That is all you do. And you'd be like, no, Swole Benji, there's more. There's more to Skull and Bones than coin collecting. You have PvP events. There's raid bosses. There's world bosses. Like, if I open my map right now, what's going on? What do we have going on? Nothing. There's nothing going on right now. There is no world bosses. There's no raid bosses. No events. And yes, when I started recording, there was a PvP event that just started. But here's the problem with the PvP event, okay? There are essentially two PvP events. Yes, there's more than two. I'm going to talk about it. PvP event, one is called, like, it's like a, a treasure map spawns. And then after five minutes, the six people that signed up for the treasure map get to fight over it. And then whoever turns it into an outpost gets a possible amazing drop or a shit drop. It's usually a shit drop, but you do have a chance, a small chance, to get the best armor or the best cannons in the game without doing the coin grind. Now here's the thing. Every single person and their mothers and their fathers and their friends and their sisters, aunts and uncles, everybody in this game is a pre-teaming scumbag. There is no way for us solo, guildless, antisocial losers who don't have friends and aren't part of society, there is no way for us to thrive in this game because if we don't have friends, we're screwed. So if I open right now, there's no way to tell who's in a team together. There's no way to tell. But uh, like right now, I'm pretty high rank compared to the other people in the lobby. There's three players that couldn't fight me at all, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that a lot of these other people are friends in some way or another and there's not really a way to check that to my knowledge but every single time i do a pvp event even if i am not carrying the treasure map five people will jump me and it's not because i'm e-famous it's not because of my name or anything it's simply because they're all in a discord or an xbox call or whatever the hell it is together that's the truth that's just how it is and then our gameplay loop here is collect loot that we'll, we're never going to use this wood ever again. Even in the new season, there's no use for it. I am I have over 1 million silver, so opening these silver chests, not exciting. Like, there's just better ways to make money. The silver chests are just a waste of time. It eats up my actions per minute. There's no point for them. So, in PvP, if you can somehow get a solo lobby where people aren't pre-teaming you, then good! Awesome! Hell yeah! You might have a little bit of fun there, but nope. Usually it's just five on one and you're dead. And there's nothing you can do. And if anyone, if one guy has a friend that has a healer, you, there's no way to win. There's no way to beat a 2v1 when one of them has a heal. Absolutely not. Unless they're bad. If you're really good and they're really bad, hey, you might win. But pff, nah, this game isn't really skill-based. It's more so gear score-based and how many friends you have based. The next PvP pin is something that's happening right in front of me right now. This is called a hostile takeover. I can't participate uh, in these anymore because I already have done hostile takeovers to own the whole zone. Yes, if I go to Africa or East Indies, I can start collecting those zones and do hostile takeovers. But in a hostile takeover, it is you're in a zone and your objective is to kill the enemy ships and earn points. And whoever earns 100% first gets the zone. And that is, uh, what, what usually happens is that uh, no one shows up to them. No one shows up to them, so it's just you solo farming. If someone shows up late, they automatically lose unless they constantly kill you, which they're not going to do if you're a tank ship. So you just sit there and tank everything. And if they don't know to shoot your sails, well, they still, they're, they're, they're wasting time shooting you instead of ships to try to earn points, okay? Next up is the fact that... Um, what I did here was a mistake. Capturing the whole zone is a mistake. If you want to truly have PvP fun, you don't capture one of the river zones like this. You should not ever capture this zone. And then you go to the hostile takeover, and because you're an active participant in the hostile takeover, you're allowed to shoot anyone who is even not participating. I can show you this now. I'm going to go in here to uh, Oki, this Oki guy who's, who's farming this. I will not show up as a hostile ship to him. I cannot hurt this man, this player. I can't hurt him because I'm not part of the hostile takeover. I'm not allowed to hurt him. But in order to prevent griefing, he is fully allowed to hurt me. And yes, that is part of the game. It's to prevent griefing. But uh, while he's doing this hostile takeover, I can't interact with this camp anyway. Like, I'm not allowed to collect my coins or do any management or whatever. 
But uh, this this player, like, I can shoot him, and nothing happens, right? I can't hurt him. But he can hurt me. So the whole... If you want to participate in this PvP, see, he even technically rammed me there, even though I rammed him by, you know, like, drifting into his into my side, into his front. Um, but yeah, this player can, can hurt me if he wants to. I can't even fight back. And so to abuse this, or in order to have more fun, what you want to do is not finish a hostile takeover in a river area because you can trap players who are just there to collect their coins or to farm or whatever and you can dunk on them kill them and take their stuff so yeah pretty fun stuff indeed but you can see here like i do no damage to this guy that d that did nothing to him but he can totally shoot me and deal damage he might not be aware of that or he might not want to grief me but yeah he's too busy farming the enemy ships right and then here comes this Emmanuel guy. He might be joining the hostile takeover. A little too late, though. This Oki D guy is already going to be fully farmed. So, whatever. So, that's the second PvP. The third PvP is called a Helm Wager. What is a Helm Wager? Well, if you accept it, you're stupid. Because you're just going to get pre-teamed on. What happens is while you're rolling around the map collecting coins, you have an offer sometimes that just pops up that's like, Hey, double or nothing, bro. If you take your coins to this random outpost 8,000 meters away, we'll double the coins you can earn. And so it sounds like a smart play or a brave play, but it's not. Because what happens is, let's say I get a Helm Wager and I'm told to go all the way down here to the Obliette. I think that's how you pronounce that. Someone always corrects me in the comments about how to pronounce shit. I don't give a fuck. If it's spelled that way, I'm going to say it that way. This is Fort du Lis. Fort du Lies? Who cares? It's spelled that way. I'm going to say it that way and you know what I'm talking about. Okay, if you want to correct me in the comments, thanks for the engagement. Thanks for the engagement, bro. You're just helping me. All right? I know you're trying to make me look stupid and uneducated because I don't know how to pronounce a French word. Who gives a shit? Anyway, the point is, is that when you do a Helm Wager, you gotta go all the way down here. Well, guess what? People can just teleport here and sit on this point. And then when you arrive, you have to sit on the point and not be attacked to a certain degree for X amount of seconds. It's like 20 seconds or something, 15 seconds, I don't know, until you can technically turn it in and get your double, double your coins. But because every freaking person in the lobby is going to be sitting there waiting for you, they just nuke you. And then because they're a pre-made team in a Discord call or an Xbox call or whatever the heck... They just give it to their little Discord kitten. Oh, here you go, sweetums. Here you go, girl gamer. Here you go. Here's 2,000 coins for you. Mwah. And they give her a kiss on the forehead, and then she makes a little oo-woo sound, and then all the dudes feel accomplished. And that's Helm Wagers. You, you will never get a fair fight in a Helm Wager. And let's say that you, you, want to, you want to do a Helm Wager as the bad guy. So you go, and you sit at the Obliette or wherever the hell it is, and you wait for the Helm Wager person to show up. Well, guess what? All their friends show up and kill you and protect the person. And then they get the turn in. You lose all your loot that you had, all your food and consumables and crap. And hopefully you didn't. You, you knew how to bank some of it because you should be banking your consumables and not carrying everything with you. And and that that's PvP. That is PvP in a nutshell in this game. This is not a PvP game. This is an optional PvP game. You don't have to PvP if you don't want to. If you want to capture these outposts, you can do the co-op shit. And that will get you all these outposts. You literally never have to PvP to have the full thing claimed if you don't want to. The PvP is completely optional in this game. You can completely skip it. So let's say you do skip it. Let's say you skip the PvP and you want to do the PvE. You want to do the raids. You want to do the, the big ships. Well, guess what? There's none on the map right now, so there's none to do. There's these little side quests. They suck. There's no reason to do them. There's the dailies. You want to do the monster dailies for the teeth. Season 1 will get you more farm for that. You can do the ghost ship daily. Uh, so you can get the ghost ship parts of the flame cannon. Even though the flame cannon sucks. It's a DPS loss. You should never use it. But people will be like, but, 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 but the game says. But the game says, listen, trust but verify. The game says the, the flame cannons are good. You can try them out and compare them to other weapons. They're not good. They're just not good. I didn't program the game. I didn't make the damn game. Just because the way that it should be or that it logically would be does not make it so. Okay, next up is the PvE crap. So let's say there is a raid on the map, and I could sit here and just refresh servers if I wanted until I got some PvE. So let's try that right now. Let's go to the main menu and try to jump into a different server where there might be some PvE activity. There's usually a raid ship, a, tr a, a trade convoy, etc., etc. Well, 
After your first two days of playing this game, there's no point in doing any of those raids. The loot that drops, the 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 infamy that you get, you know, for your kingpin rank, sucks. The loot sucks. The fights are long and tedious, and they're usually in the open ocean where the waves are pushing you around and and hurting you, and and you don't get anything really good for it. The the only good things you get are the monster hunt and the ghost ship, and that's just for the armor and which you can't even get yet. And the the flame cannon, that's it. That's the only two reasons to farm those things, which you can get the flame cannon from random loot chest drops anyway. So here we go. Maybe we've joined a new server. It looks like it. Let's see if what's going on on this map. Oh, look, a cutthroat cargo hunt that someone's already actively participating in. And, um, man, I just want to kill them just because of their, like, ship name, okay? Because I can't read squiggly lines. And uh, look... He's probably going up here, or he might be circling around waiting for fights. So I can just teleport here and fight this dude, and he's in a Brigitine, right? And I'm in a... Look, let's just do that. I'm just going to show you the how... Oh, I'm not... I can't fast travel in the middle of the ocean. By the time I dock, he's probably already going to have collected it, right? But the, the point is, is that the PvE in this game... Yeah, it's cool to fight a big raid ship. It's cool to fight the big enemy ship. And if here's the thing. Like, the Obliette, the level 12 ship, you can't solo it as a tank. You can't die to it, but you can't DPS it down in time before the ads show up and overwhelm you. If you just bring a DPS ship, unless you are the godliest of godly gamers, and I've seen one video, one guy, who perfectly played his DPS ship and did solo the ship, you know what he got for it? A couple torsion springs, okay? He got a couple springs, which you could farm in a minute from other ships. He got jack crap for it, all that effort for nothing. Oh, but he had fun, though. Did, no, he didn't have fun. It was stressful. It was very hard to manage. And, and what about the other PvE crap? You got the, the supply network. You can go and, and you can buy from a vendor some items. In this case, you can go to a ship and buy them, or you can blow up the ship and get triple the items, which I've made a video about. Link is in the description. You can go and attack a fort and, and get some supplies. You know what you do with the supplies? Well, there's a few things you can do with the damn supplies. First off, you can sell the supplies to other pretend NPC ships, getting you those coins that we talked about earlier, those pieces of eight. I can trade 65 skull, white skull gin to this guy, and I have to sail from town. I can't fast travel. I gotta go do 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 15 minutes later, here I am, and earn 99 coins, which lets you buy upgrades. It's not really efficient to do that anymore. It used to be, but it's not. What do you do with the raw ingredients? Well, you go to the distillery, and you can make alcohol or opium or whatever. So you go here, and it's like, I want to make some gold skull rum, but I need white skull rum. I want to make gold skull gin, but I need white skull gin. Well, I want to make white skull rum, so I need sugar cane. So you put some sugar cane, and there you go. Look at that. In one minute, I'll have 11 white skull rums. Oh, boy, isn't that fun? That's so fun. It's like cookie clicker shit, right? It's idle game shit. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the game. That's the game. Hey, hey, look, a leaderboard, a ranking system. Oh, boy, do you think anyone's going to give a shit if you're top ranked in this game? No. I'm going to tell you right now, when I was playing the game 20 hours a day, I was able to maintain rank 1,500, and I'm not even doing this efficiently. You want to know what the most efficient thing so far people have found is? You capture Africa... And then you bump, you pump up Harufu, and that's what you do. And that's like 8,000 an hour if you constantly feed it shit. Uh, whereas I'm making 1,100 per hour, you know, not feeding shit. If I fed this base that's level, what is this, level 8? Then I can pump this up to 1,600 per hour. It, it's just, it, like, like, someone's eventually going to spreadsheet this shit out, and then everyone's going to do it, and everyone that doesn't do it will fall behind on the rankings. Simple as, but... Who cares about your rank? What about those damn juicy rewards? Well, with the pieces of eight, that's how you buy the in-game stuff. And when you earn pieces of eight, every so often you will hit these breakpoints. So here at 40,000 pieces of eight, I earn 600 sovereigns. And these sovereigns are also a currency used to buy upgrades. And then what do you do when you buy all the upgrades? Well, you go kill the raid bosses, but you don't need the upgrades to kill the raid bosses. You just need friends. And you could solo most of the raid bosses anyway, but why would you solo them when the rewards absolutely suck? There is just nothing to do with this currency after like a week of playing. These things that cost 1,500, you can go farm them in two minutes by killing the ship. Go go kill an Orcus ship. Go kill a worm ship. A Gannet ship. You get this stuff for basically free in two minutes. 
You're not farming 1,500 coins in two minutes. This is a scam. Why does the game actively try to scam you out of your materials? Hey, remember in the early game when you went and farmed metals and you farmed wood? Well, guess what? For 100 coins, which you can get in a minute now, you can farm 50 of both of these woods. You can farm 50 of both of these uh, fibers and 50 of both of these metals, which you could just go out and mine them at this point and earn that even faster, but whatever. You know, if you want some sharks and hippos and crocodile hides, here you go. You can just buy them. You can buy the cannons. You can buy the upgraded cannons. Oh, this one is Sovereigns, the Dardanelles gun, the best weapon in the game. I've covered this on my channel. I've got four of these bad boys. It took four days to farm the Sovereigns. And uh, now that I have it, I have an overabundance of Sovereigns. And you may be thinking, well, what about the skins? Who cares? You don't get to see... The only time you get to see peep other pirates in town is when they're randomly running around. And they don't, they're not paying attention to you. They're running to their quest objective. They're running to the, the vendor. They're fast traveling. You, you, you don't really interact with people in the town. Okay? The, and another thing too. These towns, when you're walking around on foot, they feel like all the other Unreal 5 games. They all feel the same. If you play any other Unreal Engine game that's like a shooter, looter, shooter, whatever, it's just the same with a different skin, okay? This one is pirate skinned, okay? The other game is cyborg skinned or, you know, futuristic tech skinned or medieval skinned. It feels the exact same as all the other games. It's, it is the exact same, okay? Like, there's no reason to run up here and go to the damn warehouse when I can hold a button and go to manage cargo. It's the same damn thing. There's no re Like, I understand for roleplay and for flavor reasons, you know, that's why you have a warehouse person there until the player learns. But otherwise, like, is this a real player staying on the dock? This is a real player. This player's name is Turco1234. And look, they got an eye patch. Look at this dude. He, he's got no shirt. He's got a big ass hat. He's got a yellow face mask on. What's he doing? Let's see what this player is actively doing. He is running to the vanity. He, look, this guy likes to decorate his character. This guy likes, and uh, he's just not here now. This is instanced. I don't see him in here. Where's the world building? If I'm playing another MMORPG, that player would be in this building, but he's not. We saw him go in. He's not in here. It, it, the game just won't allow it. And then, well, what do you? Why do you decorate your character? Oh, look at my cool pirate dude with a bunch of pistols. The pistols don't have a use. The armor doesn't have a use. The hat doesn't have a use. In other games, when you buy armor and outfits, it gives you a bonus. But this is just purely cosmetic and nothing more. And that sucks. I don't care about cosmetics. My character could be a gray block for all I care, and that character, you know, that gray block, literally robot, Roblox character, right? You know, who cares what my character looks like? I care about the social interactions with other players. Most players don't give a shit how their character looks. Making your character look special and stand out, no one's going to notice, and no one's going to care or remember in a week. Just No one cares. No one cares, all right? And uh, it's just a it's just a waste of time activity, all right? Like, it, it, yeah, if the clothes we wore and the hat we wore gave us a bonus, like, hey, you, you could increase your sailing speed by one knot with this epic pirate hat. Then everyone would go to the raid boss and kill the raid boss for a 5% chance for the hat to drop, and then they could equip that hat and they could sail 1% faster, which might give them an incentive to do PvP once they've grinded out all the legendary gear and whatnot, okay? But this game doesn't have that. This game needs that, but it doesn't have that. Also, can I shove this player? And Does he move? Like, no, I can just walk through him, okay. So there's no collision, that's whatever, who cares? But, like, that's the game. That, that there's no loop for me to enjoy anymore. Once you have the gear, and I'm uh, look, I'm not some hardcore diehard mega turbo gamer that can play all day. I mean, I kind of am, but even if you played this game two hours a day, you're going to be done with this game in a month. This game dies in a month. And again, you're saying season one, season one, season one. Let me show you season one's content, okay? Season one's content is poison. Poison enemies. That may dr There's some furnitures that can upgrade your damage or your sail speed, whatever. There's going to be a few different ships and balancing and rebalancing of ships. Sure, sure, yeah. They're going to change it. There's, you're, they're going to nerf some stuff. They're going to buff some stuff, just like every other video game ever. And sure, okay. But it's the same loop. Once you've killed the same bosses, you have no incentive to kill them anymore. Once you, like, you still have no incentive to do the PvP as a solo player. 
which the majority of gamers these days are solo players, the vast majority of people that play video games do not have friends. Have you seen Gen X? Uh, or, I'm sorry, Gen Z and Gen A? They don't have friends. Hell, I'm Gen Millennial, and I don't have friends. And, and that's a me problem, I understand, I know, blah, 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 I'm not a normie, etc, etc. But the point is, is the majority of gamers just aren't going to have friends, aren't going to make friends. The game doesn't give you the capacity to make friends because you can't talk in it. There is no, like, there is no proximity voice chat. Why is there not proximity voice chat? So, here's the new enemy for Season 1, and this is a poison pestilence, fleet of pestilence. Check this out. This is, this is the gameplay that we're going to see right now in season one in like a week's time i'm gonna i've anchored my ship but i'm still sailing at full speed hello game can you stop already and we're just gonna shoot at the tower get a little bit of aggro and uh, is it shooting at someone else right now okay look it's shooting over there for some reason am i too close to the t okay i'm getting hit here we go i'm bracing it's poison damage i can't block this i'm in a tank ship one poison mortar i'm dead that's the content we're getting in a week okay one poison mortar kills you <laughs> on the tankiest highest hp ship in the game while bracing you're just dead isn't isn't that fun isn't that the the greatest thing you've ever seen and yes i can kill the tower i can sail around and dodge the mortar that's not the point that i'm making here the point is is that that's the content a bunch of fart gas is going to get spewed all over you and you have no way to resist it there's no poison resistance in the game there's no poison defense in the game but hey you know what it's the same thing the other mmos do hey we're gonna make this cool epic flame boss called ragnaros and if you want to beat him you gotta stack fire resistance cool now we're gonna make a new dungeon and this is darkness a, a dark dragon called uh, nefarian and if you want to survive him you gotta stack darkness resistance and so that's the that that's that's the future i'm predicting it right now season one is poison Season 2 will be ice or something. Season 3 will be lightning. <laughs> lightning cannons. Ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom, ba -doom. And <laughs> like that's the game, bros. There's no socialization. There's no fun to be had outside of the gear grind. And once you have the gear, it's slightly better than what you could get normally. Like, yes, the best cannons in the game are a 20% damage boost over the next best cannons in the game. Where the hell is my stuff at? Uh, let me get that food back. Why can't I? I'm hitting the loot button. There it is. Oh, look, I'm poisoned again. Oh, no. I'm poisoned, guys. Run away. Run away from the po Oh, no. Oh, he's about to hit me here. But I'm in a tanky ship, so I'm going to have to hit that. Oh, I'm poisoned again. Oh, no. Look at my HP bar go down. Heal. I didn't use a good heal there. And, uh, yeah, that's the game. Okay. That's the season one. That's the game. Just killing these ships, you know, randomly, like, what do I get for this? I don't need screw mechanisms, I don't need camphor, I don't need zinc, I don't need cannonball crates or silver. This guy has roselle cloth, don't need it, I've got hundreds, don't need it, just don't need it at all. Pointless, pointless farm, pointless to kill. But, 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 kingpin rank, okay, rank 24 or rank 25, you know what I get? A random loot chest full of stuff I can already craft, make, or get on my own. N it's not an upgrade, it's just a random loot chest of useless freaking junk. Not even skins! Not even skin drops. Not even for those cosmetic players. Anyway, that's my review. The end game sucks. The mid game's okay. And the beginning of the game is amazing. I love the beginning of the game. Alright? But you can play the beginning of the game for free with an 8-hour trial. There's, you don't have to pay for the game. So my recommendation is if you want to experience or play this game, there's two things you can do. You can play the 8-hour free trial, experience the early game, and then never touch it again. That's what I wish I would have done. Except I have to make videos to make a living. Or otherwise, I starve, I die, I can't pay my bills. I am forced to make videos for this game and any game that is successful. So, Power World videos soon and Helldivers 2 videos soon. And if you like Albion, there's always going to be those videos until they ban me for whatever reason. But that's my review. If you, if you still want to play this game, I have 21 copies of this game to give out because I won a contest. There was a little photography like uh you know hunt activity we had to they, they gave us a, an activity where we had to sail around and find certain little landmarks and i was able to find it pretty quick in like four hours and i won 20 game keys to give to you guys so with that said if you want a free copy of this 90 dollar game 
join my Discord. There's a link in the description. You will have to pass a questionnaire, and you will have to play other games with me and be my internet friend, and, and only then will I give you a key. Anyway, thank you so much. Leave a like, leave a comment. On the right side of your screen is a video you should absolutely click. Also, for all the dipshits saying that the uh, silver method is patched, it clearly isn't. Uh, look, I just did it. I literally just did the silver method, okay? If you don't know how I have 9999999999 silver, I have a video link in the description for that. Anyway, on the right side of your screen, there's a video you should absolutely click. And if you don't click it, then you're going to have a flat tire in two days.